and free. God is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. We, the greater Boston community, black and white, Latino, and Asian, wealthy and poor, we together, middle class, we're gonna help you get up and we're gonna help change the toxic atmosphere that threatens your ability to stay up once you get up. A lot of youth that are walking around in the community today, they can't see themselves living here past another four, five, six years. I also believe that that's one of the reasons why the dropout rate is so high. Why go to school if I don't see myself being alive until I'm 18 or 21? In the projects, they put a group of poor kids together, and all their influences is like drug dealers, gang bangers, pimps, whores, and they allow us to grow up in something like that without no guidance, without telling us that's wrong. I think it's all a setup, honestly. And if I grew up around a doctor, I would want to become a doctor. The U.S. is kind of set up for white men to succeed more than black men. So, so if you're looking at a black man who succeeds, you look at yourself like, I could do that. When we see Obama, we see all that, but we don't see it near us. Kind of look like a faraway land, like Neverland us. It's on TV. It's not real. By the time I got to fifth grade, um, school was tough. And then they said, oh, you're diagnosed with ADD, and they tried to give me medication. I didn't take it because I knew that wasn't the issue. I couldn't read. Like, I wouldn't read out loud in the class. I used to have problems at home because I wasn't going to school. I kept running away from home, get caught fighting. I got into fights in DYS. And then that's when they was like, we can't deal with this girl anymore. Lock her up. I locked up for fighting one of the staff members at the group home. I was in there for a good nine months. They pay more money to lock people up instead of to just help for schools and stuff. They just focus on like locking everybody up. That's the key. That's the answer to everything now. Lock up education is like it's like middle school, elementary. Slow, slow class. Make us feel stupid. My mom like went out her way and like got me tested like somewhere different, not in the Boston public school system, but outside of the school system. And they found out that I had dyslexia. I was in tenth grade when they said that. That was where they explained it to me, and I'm like, oh my goodness, that's me. I understand people back in the day, school never used to be like this. Never had some of the dropouts. I think public school is a microcosm for what's going on in the world. Whatever is going on outside is going on here in this building and is impacting 
what we do on a daily basis. The financial worries that they have is what leads what the future is going to be, not knowing that education would be your way to poverty. They don't see it that way. We have a little, a little boy who, he's been with us even at the Higginson. So um, he's, he's still in elementary and he gets himself up in the morning, he fixes a breakfast, he takes his little shower, he wakes up his two younger siblings, he feeds them and then he'll wake up his mother and then once he's dressed and all, he gets to walk to a bus stop. Now he might forget his belt and sometimes he has. He has forgotten to put socks on, you know. Yet he's an A student and that gets me. And you also have to be resilient, resilient. Whenever you get knocked down, get up and try it again. Don't ever let them see you stay there. Don't fall and stay there. Fall and get up. And get up coming strong and show that you are self-worthy to be somebody and to do anything that you put your mind to. My dream in life is to become a um, wealthy lawyer. Try to become a lawyer, emancipation lawyer to be exact. You know? And then I took classes. I went to like um, the school called Linda Mubel. It took me eight weeks and I was on like a third to fifth grade reading level. So, and then I got bumped all the way to like a 10th grade reading level. I want to own a business that gives back to the community. Like, something like giving back, book bags to, to kids when they go to school. Something to help out the kids. Bring back the community, not just keep locking people up. None of these schools in the Boston public school system can really do this, you know, by themselves. Um, and uh, so to, 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 have, to, have something, uh, uh, to, to have something powerful going on in these schools, you definitely need community partners to step up. The dear boy, I think he's been on a list to close for a while. He's been on a list where people are talking about it's not producing results, the building's dilapidated, um, we don't know what to do with them, we're, we're going to close them. So that a year from now, two years, when we're in a new school, it'll be new all the way around. And this month we ask, and I ask, I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So what fuel is, is attempt to bring the families alongside of all of that education reform so they can benefit from it. And we do it with a monetary incentive. All we ask families to do is save for the kids, go to meetings about their kids' education, and send their kids to after-school programs. If they do those three things, we will match 100% what they save, up to $1,500, so that by the time they graduate, they're going to have $3,000 extra dollars for their kids' education.